Um, good morning. Um, my name's Donna Kluwer, and I'm the Neurology Manager at Plymouth Hospital's NHS Trust, which is a large acute teaching hospital um, and neuroscience centre on the border between Devon and Cornwall. We're here today to tell you about our proposal to create a neurological partnership. It's actually not neuroscience's partnership, which it describes in the, in the information. It is a neurological partnership um, involving the five acute trusts in the Southwest Peninsula, um, our voluntary sector partners, and where appropriate, industry as well. I'm here today with some of those partners, so I can introduce them. This is Dr. Martin Sadler, who's one of our consultant neurologists in Plymouth. Dr. Rebecca Aylwood, who's a consultant neurologist in South Devon Healthcare Foundation Trust in Torbay. And Karen Pierce, who's the Director of Care for the Motor Neurone Disease Association. Um, the Southwest Peninsula of Devon and Cornwall has a population of 1.7 million, 21% live in rural communities, and that's compared with 5% nationally. Um, as, as part of the um, peninsula, what we also include is the um, Cornwall and Isles of Scilly. So obviously it's a very disparate um, group of patients. Uh, the peninsula covers 4,000 square miles and has virtually no motorways. So getting around the peninsula can be quite problematic and getting into it and out of it um, as well. Neurological long-term conditions are characterised by deteriorating mobility and the geography of the peninsula can make it particularly difficult for these patients to access specialist care. The cost of neurological services is growing faster than almost any other. We believe that our proposal can deliver innovative and new ways of working that can make an evidence-based, patient-focused and equitable service financially sustainable. I'm going to hand you over now to Martin, who's going to tell you more about the partnership, how it's going to operate and what the benefit will be for our patients. Thank you. Hi, I'm Martin Sadler, a clinical neurologist. What characterises our proposal is that it has been developed from the bottom up by clinicians who care for patients and those patient groups. We have one neurologist per 100,000 of the population spread over a large geographical area. We're all generalists with a specialist interest. And collectively, in the peninsula, we have high-quality specialist expertise in all areas of neurology, but we don't have it at each site. As individual clinicians, we all want all of our patients, wherever they are in the peninsula, to have timely access to a specialist opinion and for us to be able to provide a consistent, high-quality service. Now, this is not a problem unique to neurology, and our approach can be scaled and reproduced anywhere that there are clinicians thinly spread across a large geographical region. Furthermore, each of our clinicians wants to maintain their relationship with their patients and their clinical autonomy, but is keen to be working in collaboration to ensure best patient care. And with these things in mind, we've developed the Peninsula Neurological Partnership. We've identified several long-term conditions in neurology that may be suitable for a networked management approach. These include multiple sclerosis, epilepsy, Parkinson's disease, uh, and headache. And we've partly developed uh, our network approach to epilepsy, and Rebecca can answer questions on that uh, time allowing. And we've already fully developed our network approach for our pilot and template illness of motor neurone disease, working in partnership with the Motor Neurone Disease Association. So how will it work? Well, each long-term condition will have a condition-specific group to decide upon common standards, care pathways, and governance. And the membership of this group would depend upon the condition. And now Karen will illustrate how this was developed for patients with motor neurone disease. Good afternoon, everyone. In 2008, people with motor neurone disease and their carers told us that understanding their needs across Devon and Cornwall was poor. The Southwest Peninsula approached us and we supported the funding of a service that has made a significant impact on those with a rapidly progressing neurological disease that is always fatal. The service has a steering group, which includes neurologists, palliative medicine consultants, nurses, therapists, the Motor Neurone Disease Association, but most importantly, patients and carers uh, as representatives, the real experts in the impact of the, the disease on them. Success has been driven through the creation of a number of multidisciplinary teams whose membership reflects the specific needs of people with motor neurone disease, such as respiratory care and end-of-life care. 
Most importantly, those MDTs have developed pathways, such as enteral feeding, and also new pathways that are being developed around very challenging areas, such as withdrawal of non-invasive ventilation. Crucially, this is driven through a single point of contact, a specialist nurse coordinator. She, amongst other things, supports the education of professionals across the region and is the first point of contact for patients and carers following a very devastating diagnosis. The success of this model has resulted in continuous improvement. The latest is telephone clinics. This means that those finding travel difficult across a very dispersed geography can phone in. They don't have to visit a clinic unless it's absolutely essential. Thank you. And so what would we have achieved in the next 12 months? Well, we would have set up an umbrella steering group. We would have set up the remaining condition-specific groups, and we've already identified clinical leads for each of these. We would, we would have established multidisciplinary teams where needed, and we've already established three, three of these in Plymouth. We would have performed baseline audits of the current service and perform a gap analysis at each centre. And we'd also develop some patient monitoring of their condition. And we've already uh, created apps to um, assess the monitoring aspects of epilepsy, and an app is nearly complete for the similar thing in Parkinson's disease. Uh, the epilepsy app was uh, written in Plymouth, but uh, was based upon work performed in Cornwall, another illustration of our collaborative approach. And what would we expect to get uh, from being a Vanguard site and support from the Vanguard team? Well, we'd hope to gain from learning with others so that we would not be duplicating effort. We'd expect an increase in the pace of change. And we'd hope that being a Vanguard site would act as a lever for us to be able to use to help us get engagement from each centre with, the, with any of the network proposals. And so in conclusion, we believe that the strength of our proposal lies in its simplicity and specificity. We know that one size doesn't fit all, and our proposal works with specific patient groups, with specific needs, using specific partnerships to find specific solutions. Our clinical network and umbrella arrangements allow learning and innovation sorry, to be spread. Sorry, I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to cut you off there. Really sorry. Apologies. Oh, two Dude, lines to go. Sorry. So can I have questions for the team from uh, the Neuroscience Centre, please? Yeah, table number 10, please. Thank you. We can only guess at the last two lines. Well, they won't be. <laughs> So, very nice model. Um, so the same sort of question in reverse, given as you said you're dealing with devastating diagnoses with these really difficult long-term conditions, do you have plans for the incorporation of mental health into your MDT's psychological support to actually support the entire person rather than just the system-specific problem? Deal with that I, I can deal with that from a motor neuron disease association point of view, um, but also link it into the rest of the uh, the rest of the <coughs> network too. Uh, I mean, certainly within Plymouth, uh, there's uh, neuropsychology support for for people with uh, uh, um, neurological uh, illness, uh, and we're learning that there's more cognitive impairment and frontotemporal dementia in certain diseases than we'd ever understood before. So crucially important to bring those uh, specific areas. But as we mentioned within the multidisciplinary teams, they have representatives that are specific to the, to the disease group. So you would invite the relevant clinicians to, to be in those groups in order to support uh, those different areas. Rebecca? Yes, just a comment. Um, I'm lead on the epilepsy uh, my, uh, network um, and of course epilepsy has a lot of um, mental health issues around it not only for the patients themselves but often uh, in dealing with a condition with a family epilepsy is not a condition that is rapidly progressive and leads to death but is extremely um, difficult to predict so people need crisis management and a lot of what they need is the kind of mental health care that we heard about with cafes and, and support in the community and one of the things we can do by having these very specific networks is that we have on in the network people who are already often dealing with these problems and we just bring them into the network and therefore we can support each other. And what we've heard, we have a lot of uh, learning disability people in our epilepsy group and also people from mental health 
more generally. And what we find is that not only do the patients respond by saying, actually, for the first time, people are seeing them and noticing them out there, but also the staff who've often worked in isolation, this very widely dispersed peninsula, and sometimes on the islands, are saying, this is wonderful. For the first time, we feel that we belong to an organisation. We've got someone to talk to. Thank you. Question at uh, table number nine, please. Uh, thanks very much, Jeff Pelling. And, uh, I'm just picking on the learning that might be for other systems, uh, ours and cancer, but for everyone else. You talked about uh, telephone clinics, and I'm sure there's be a range of other approaches to reduce travel or deal with regional services. How do we get the learning from that out, both the financial models and the best ways to do it? How do we get that out of your system into other systems? I mean, to us, that's one of the advantages of being part of the Vanguard program. Um, we are expecting that the learning from each of the condition-specific groups would be spread across the different sites. It then be spread between conditions through the umbrella organisation that we have. But then we would hope that as part of being part of the Vanguard programme, that means that we can link in with other similar services. Certainly we consider that anything that we're doing is transferable to other long-term conditions. And so we would hope that that's the benefit to other hospitals, other services of us being part of the Vanguard. Thank you. Further questions? Here, table number 14. Um, Donna, can I just ask, sorry, my name is Trevor Fernandez, patient, East of England. Um, can I just ask you about the app? Um, I understand that that was developed in-house, um, and you've, uh, your trust has footed the bill for that. Um, will that app be available up and down the country to others? Um, yeah, the, the app that we've already, well, we've actually, we've developed two specific apps. One's a dementia app, and that's um, called Ace Mobile. And the other app that's just been released is called Epsmon, which is epilepsy self-monitoring. Um, and that's been developed by um, a team called NeuroCore, which is a couple of our neuropsychologists um, who've um, created a, a small company that's um, dealing with um, neuro neurological and cognitive research. That's basically what NeuroCore comes from. And so in their spare time, really, what they've been looking at is how can we develop ways in which patients can self-monitor. The Epsmon app, I know, can if you Google it, you'll find it on Google. And the next one that we want to now apply the same technology and the same learning to is, the, is a PD uh, self-monitoring app as well. So, yeah, it will be something definitely we would want to make available generally as soon as it gets rolled out. Thank you very much. I'm being told that it's time. So sorry, uh, apologies, no more questions there. So can I have a big thank you for the Neurosciences Centre for the Southwest? <laughs>